this is Avril Brown from ComicsWaitingRoom.com, and I'm sitting here with Kurt, author of One Year in Indiana. So you want to tell us a little bit about it? Uh, it's a mildly autobiographical uh, <clears throat> story about uh, one year that I had to live in Indiana when I was stranded on a college campus, uh, and I didn't have to go to school. So that's basically what it is. I take the stories and I exaggerate them and uh, make them kind of fun. You said semi-autobiographical. How much would you say that you... Well, the stories are all real, but the characters I, I had to come up with myself. Where was your inspiration for those characters? Um, that's a good question. I just figured uh, I figured a lead vocalist of a death metal band is more interesting than the, the uh, bass player of a bad punk band. So, And uh, I needed uh, another character, his roommate, to be sort of like the straight guy, mellow dude. And that's, uh, that's where I came up with Ziggy. They're both... I guess they're both, if you put them together, they're kind of like me. So and that's that's where I came up with it. I just figure all the other weirdos just fell into place as far as people I remember meeting and stuff. So, Lots of weirdos in Indiana? That's a fair amount, yeah. That's a fair amount. And, you know, college towns are ripe for, for satire because they're all, really, all those people, every college town you ever go to that are on the campus, they're all the same. They all, But they all think that, you know, because they've just gotten out, they're not living at home anymore, they've got this whole thing, they're like, wow, I am living my life and everything's great. And, you know, and that's wonderful, but... You see that, like, they think that everything that's in their little world is, like, the grandest thing ever. And, you know, you go to every college campus, they're all kind of like that. So, And they all kind of dress the same. They all look like the Beastie Boys with caps and flannel shirts that are open and, and docker pants. That's why most of my characters that are on the campus, most of them have their baseball caps backwards. Because if you go to a college campus, you can't swing a dead cat without hitting some dude with a baseball cap wearing it backwards. So. It's fun. But I had a great time. I mean, I, it sounds like I may be mocking big college campuses, but I had a great time doing it. So... You know, and uh, there's a lot of crazy people that live in Indiana, and it's fun. A lot of material to use. Oh, yes, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. So do you see yourself writing this for a while, or is there, you know... You know, I, my plan was always either 365 issues, 52 issues, or 12. And at the rate I'm going, I might have six. So, you know, anything that was, like, sort of multiple of a, of a year, I'll do. Because I'm going to run out pretty soon. And I, can, I haven't decided... I mean, I got... I thought maybe trying to spin it off and doing it as just like a comic strip, like maybe one pa one panel gags for a while. And we'll see how that goes, but I want to get the stories out first and see what I can do with that. Have any other radical new ideas on the horizon? I did have a character that I was going to do for, uh, I didn't know what his name was, maybe it's to say Carl. It was me, Carl, the disgruntled sound man. Because every time I go to a punk show or any kind of a show, you always see the sound man on stage and he's putting the mics in front of the drums, getting all pissed off. And I went to a, a, a like a metal show where they had, Metal bands always have gigantic drum risers. And I just remember the sound guy climbing up on the stage. He just stood and stared at the drum. And he just goes, because <sighs> he knew he had to mic every drum. And this guy's got like 10,000 drums and 1,000 cymbals. So I figured you could go with that. You know, just the, the sound guys to put up with the crappy local bands, stupid, uh, stupid uh, um, you know, touring bands, you know, art, art rock and all that kind of stuff. So there's, there's a lot of info there, but I got to do a little more research as far as hanging out with sound guys. Because they're a weird lot too. Because they really wanted to be like popular and big, and but they don't usually. They just they're kind of pooped on and made fun of a lot. So the poor downtrodden sound man. That might be my next trip. You're his silent voice. Yes, the silent <laughs> voice for the angry sound man. Yes. Right. But uh, yeah, that's, that's really much what I got so far. I'm just kind of riding this to see what happens. It's been a it's been fun so far, and people seem to kind of respond to it. So I don't know. You'll either see me in a year, or I'll you know won't do anything. Sit at home, watch TV. <laughs> All right. Well, good luck with everything. Well, thank, thank you for your time. Well, thank you. That was wonderful.